This week, learn how to write fewer for loops using list comprehensions. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hi, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, I wanted to talk about one of the wonderful basic batteries included type features of Python, which are list comprehensions. So list comprehensions are a way to prevent yourself from having to write a lot of simple one or two line for loops. So let's just jump right in and look at a couple of examples. I think it'll be a lot clearer why these are useful. So first I'm gonna create some X data. So for that, I'm just gonna use range 10. So this will give me X ranging from zero to nine. Now let's say that I want to square each of those numbers. One way to do it would be I'm gonna create my empty list, y1. So open close bracket. And then I'm gonna say for i in x, y1 dot append, i squared. So it's gonna take each element in x, assign it to the variable i, and then square it and append that to y1. So if I run that and look at y1 now, there we go, I have squares from zero to nine. But with list comprehensions, we can do this in a little bit more straightforward way, not have to create the empty list first and all of this. So I'm gonna say y2 equals, in this case, I'm gonna get cubes. So i cubed for i in x. So you see this looks very similar to the for loop that we wrote above for i and x, that comes directly from here. Then out here, I'm assigning the cube of i to the next element in that list. So I don't have to create an empty list and then use a dot append method. This just says for every i in x, cube it and shove all of those results in y2. So now if I look at y2, there I have all the cubes from zero to nine. While that's useful and does save, you know, it takes three lines down to one line and one line that's arguably more readable, we can go even a little bit further here. Say y2 even equals, and now we can create a conditional in our list comprehension. So in this case, I'm gonna say that the evens of y2 are i for i in y2 if i modulus two, so the remainder here, is zero. So let's break this down a little bit. For i and y two, that looks like the start of our normal for loop. I'm gonna go through y two, and for each of those elements, I'm gonna call it y. If the remainder when I divide by two or modulus two is zero, then I'm gonna shove i into this list called y two even. So if I do this, and we take a look at y2 even, now I have only the even cubes that were in the list y2. Okay, and you'll notice that this list is shorter than the original y2 list, of course, because not all of those are even numbers. We can also add another conditional in here if we wanted. I mean, going much past this, things get a little bit too complex to easily read, and you should probably go ahead and break down your logic some. But in this case, I'm gonna say y2 large even is i for i and y2, so that's all the same. If i modulus two is equal zero, that's the same. And so I'm adding another conditional here, i is greater than 200. And if I look at y2, large even, I would expect it to see 216 and 512, and that's exactly what I get. So that is great, except now we only have two elements. Maybe we wanted to say, if it's not a large even, then replace it with a zero or negative 999 or missing data, whatever you wanna do here. Maybe I need to keep the lists the same length. Well, we would do that normally with an if else statement embedded in our for loop. So now we have a for loop, then a tab into that, we have an if, and then after the if, we have an else. 
Again, that's quite a few lines. We can do it all here. So I'm going to reuse the same name here, y2 large even. And I'm going to say that it is i if i modulus 2 equals 0 and i greater than 200 else 0 for i n y2. So there's a little bit of reordering here, but I'm saying that for every i in y2, if the modulus 2 is 0, then it's i, and if it's greater than 200, else it's 0. So now if I run that, we look at y2 large even, you see I just have 216 and 512 remaining, everything else is indeed filled in with zeros. So it's a really useful way to reduce what would have been you know, 6, 9, 10 lines of logic into a single line that's still relatively readable, but we're bordering on it here. As a final example, and this is probably the most complex that I would recommend you go with list comprehensions before you go ahead and start explicitly writing loops or using NumPy operations, something else to break down the logic, let's create a list of lists. I'm going to call it data. My first list is going to have the elements 1, 2, 3. My second list, 4, 5, 6. And my third list, 7, 8, 9. So if I look at data, you see exactly what we typed, a list of lists. Now let's say that we wanted to flatten that to be a single list that had the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So one way to do that would be to write something like for b in data, for a in b, flattened.append a, we need to create our empty list up here flattened. And you see that got us exactly what we wanted. One through nine, all in a single list. But it's two embedded for loops, so four, tab, four, tab. It's not that nice to read. We can do this in a list comprehension. So we're going to say flattened equals a for b in data. So that is straight from the first line here of our nested for loops for a and b. So this might look a little alien if you were just to see this, but remember how list comprehensions work. This is what gets stuffed in our list flattened. This is the first operation that's going to happen for b and data. And then this is what's going to happen next for a and b. So when you break it down like that, list comprehensions can be pretty readable, especially once you get used to looking at them. So now if I run that and look at flattened again, you see I get the exact same result in one line instead of in four lines of code. It's very succinct. I hope that you found this useful. If you did, make sure to click like and subscribe down below. You can find us on Twitter. We're at MetPy and at Unidata. You can also find us on Facebook by just searching for Unidata. There are also helpful links down in the video description below. I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.